Hey everybody, Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. This video we're going to talk about making rapid transitions from precision to practical accuracy or the Eleanor drill. There are thousands of shooting drills out there, probably more than that if somebody actually sat down and counted them all up. Uh, when I use drills, I either use what exists if it serves a purpose or I come up with something that's going to be modular and it's going to be effective and it's not just something I come up with to be able to name a drill and be like, hey, I got a drill too, you know, this is mine or, or whatever. Uh, when I was working on the course of fire for the Red Dot handgun class, uh, I wanted to create something that was modular and effective and could potentially uh, require a very low round count of ammo but still serve the purpose for the, the period of instruction, what I'm trying to, to, uh, to teach. And one of, those, one of those skills that we want to cover, especially with Red Dot handguns, but this applies to iron sights and rifles as well, is making a rapid transition from precision to practical accuracy. Now, when we talk about red dots, one of the things that we have to contend with, uh, handguns, more so with rifles, but handguns is also a factor, is holdover. We have that mechanical offset of the optic height, the zero distance, and then the actual bore axis. So if you're really close to your target and you got a 25 yard zero, you might have to hold half an inch, maybe a little bit more higher to get point of aim, point of impact knowledgeably. Now, some people with handguns, they just kind of be like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not really worried about holdover with a handgun because, you know, outside of five yards, you don't really notice it. And that's more or less true. However, your bullets should always go or you should strive to always put your bullets exactly where you wanted them to go. So a drill I came up with, and I just happened to be watching a movie on television in the background noise while I'm working on my laptop, was Gone in 60 Seconds. And the drill I came up with was a one and three, which became the Eleanor drill. It's called the Eleanor drill because, well, let me explain that. A drill is really straightforward. It requires one precision shot and then a rapid transition to three rounds of practical accuracy. Now the target I use uh, almost exclusively is the UTC. Uh, the UTC has a reduced size A zone. If you're familiar with some of the IDPA or IPSC style targets out there, the A zones are pretty generous. Uh, course depending on what you're trying to accomplish and how little amount of time you want to do it in uh, but the a zone on the, the UTC and the UTC anatomy targets is four by six inches which is a pretty reduced size a zone compared to what some people might be used to I actually like it a lot because it's closer to what I would consider to be the size of a very critical region of the body in the high thoracic cavity it's roughly the size of the human heart and there's a lot of stuff back there that doesn't react well to gunfire and since I am a self-defense instructor uh, everything I teach is in regards to human anatomy, uh, so I like that smaller A zone. It forces students to be a little bit more controlled uh, with their round placement than what you'd get from the larger A zones that are more competition based. Nothing wrong with those A zones, I just don't like how large they are. So uh, with this drill, what someone has to accomplish is they have to deliver one round of precision accuracy to uh, usually the head. It's a one inch internal diameter circle and then they have to make a rapid transition down to a reduced reduced size A zone which instead of being four by six which I consider to be pretty generous at three yards uh, it's now uh, three by four. Yeah just slightly smaller than your average three by five card. Uh, if you had all the time in the world this wouldn't be something super complicated to do. The hardest part of this drill is the holdover uh, for that one inch precision shot since it's with the handgun it's fired from three yards but then you have to make a rapid point of aim change and go into cadence fire you have to deliver three rounds uh, inside that three by four box the time standard for this drill for Eleanor is 2.5 seconds regardless of if you're coming from concealment or from a duty holster with the rifle it's shot from five yards from a low ready one round precision three rounds cadence to again that three by four reduced reduced sized a zone two point four one So where's the value in Eleanor? Did I just come up with a drill to have my own Sage Dynamics? Hey, this is Sage Dynamics drill. No. Uh, what I wanted was something modular. So when I'm teaching red dots on handguns specifically, even though you can apply this, like I said, to iron sights or red dots or variable magnification optics and rifles, really anything that shoots bullets, you can use Eleanor for, but it was really intended for red dot purposes, such as the handgun or the rifle. That precision shot right out of the gate, first thing you gotta do 
adding that uh, range artificiality, but very popular metric of a time constraint. So our three common metrics that we see in shooting are time, distance, and accuracy. This drill got all three. Uh, and even though you're making that precision shot and you're closer, relatively speaking, to the target, holdover is a huge factor. Probably more so with the rifle, depending on what zero you choose, than with the handgun. But even with a 10-yard zero and a handgun, most people 25, uh, holdover has to be accomplished and you've got no frame of reference for that holdover. So if you don't know your holdovers, uh, you're going to struggle with this drill. Then you have to make a rapid point of aim change. Uh, the actual movement isn't very hard. You're going from the head down to the, high, the top of the high thoracic cavity in that reduced, reduced sized A zone. Uh, but then you have to fire three rounds of cadence. And most people will make their mistakes on those three rounds of cadence because they're trying to get the time. So you take a little bit more time to balance out for that precision shot, and then you immediately have to go down to that A zone. And if you're racing the clock, which you know most people are gonna do if time limit is a factor, uh, you may burn those three rounds a little too quick and throw them outside of the box, and that's not something we want. So the whole purpose of the drill is to reinforce those rapid transitions. And even though you're close to the target, changing point of aim at a closer distance than a further distance is a little bit more problematic physiologically speaking, because we tend to have over-travel in our movement because we're humans, we're not machines. So having the discipline to be able to stop in time and drag that dot down to where you want it to go um, can complicate things a little bit. Uh, and it does make a, make a learning factor, uh, which is exactly the goal of the drill. A lot, a, a lot of drills focus on moving from left to right, and that's fine. Those are good drills to focus on point of aim changes for movement or, or, or whatever your goal is. But moving from top to bottom or bottom to top is another thing that needs to be factored into the drills that you shoot. So be it handgun or rifle, the Eleanor drill is going to be very modular to reinforce those facts. Now you can, you can shoot this drill from any distance you want within reason. Once you get back to about 10, 15 yards with the handgun and honestly with the rifle as well, that precision shot becomes a very, very difficult thing to obtain even though your holdover, relatively speaking, is going to be less because one inch, a one inch hit from let's say 10 yards with a handgun, totally doable probably not going to be something the, the average shooter is going to be able to accomplish repeatedly uh, within the time frame of 2.5 seconds. So for record, this drill is shot from three yards with the handgun and five yards with the rifle. I mentioned modularity, and here's how the drill is modular. It's actually pretty simple. You just keep stacking it. So you can have a one and three, precision, three rounds cadence, and then add another round. So one, three, one. So one round, precision, three rounds cadence, one round of precision. You can do one and five, one and seven, one, seven, one, so on and so forth. You gotta keep the numbers pretty simplistic uh, so people don't get lost uh, along the way. Uh, we don't wanna be like one, three, five, seven, two, four, five, three pi, whatever. We don't wanna get into that. But if you add a second or a third target, then you can actually work it in boxes or work it in ridges or however you want to do it to where it's one, three, three, one, so on and so forth. You see how easy it would be to build something really, really um, fun, uh, but also educational because this should be both uh, with this drill. For those of you who attend Sage Dynamics classes, any live fire class for a handgun or rifle, you're gonna have an opportunity to shoot this drill for record. It has to be shot cold. You come with a handgun, you got to shoot with your brat. So if you normally shoot from concealment, you got to run it from concealment. From duty, got to run it from duty from your level two, level three retention holster. My personal experience, I actually run a little bit faster time from duty than I do from concealment, just because there's less things to go wrong, less things to worry about. I'm just coming out of a retention holster versus having to clear cover garments. Uh, so I'm shooting from concealment, I'm shooting in the two fours, uh, and from duty, I'm shooting in the two threes. When I was coming up with the time stamp on this, the time limit, if you will, I sent this drill to a bunch of my peers, other instructors and alumni that are really, really competent shooters and say, hey, shoot this, give me your average best time. What we came up with was 2.5 seconds. That's the average. If you do everything right, you're going to get it. And I know that's like, well, of course you get everything right. No, what I mean is if you do everything proficiently the way that you should be doing, the way you should be applying your grip, your fundamentals, uh, there's no way you're not going to get it. Uh, but if you come to a class, you get to shoot it once for record. Um, you're going to shoot it multiple times during the class because I use it during teaching. But on, usually on the second day, I'll have everybody run it on a cold target. Very first rounds down range after the safety briefing. And if you shoot it in time, you get a sweet coin. Uh, and everybody's big on coins, and this is something I wanted to do. I already do uh, patch awards. Guys can earn patches for their performance in classes. But I thought the coin was a nice little bonus. Uh, they're sequentially numbered, so we're going to know how many people are out there so far. Um, 
to perpetuity, if you will, how many people are actually able to accomplish uh, this drill. Unfortunately, I can't just have it, you know, the internet run it and mail out coins to people because that's just not uh, conducive to, well, uh, you got to come to a class is basically what I'm saying if you want to earn the coin. So if you're looking for a very simple drill that doesn't require a whole lot of rounds fired, if you're just running this as a one and three, uh, 50 rounds is gonna give you a lot of good practice if you're working on holdovers or rapid transitions or cadence for that day. This drill's got a lot of cool stuff in it. You can add rounds to it. If you're really focused on your cadence, you're trying to develop that, uh, that reticle behavior and that grip technique and nothing helps you develop your grip technique more than getting the gun running as fast as possible. There's other things as well, but that definitely helps cement your technique. You can use the Eleanor and, and vary the round counts to do that, depending on how much ammunition you have for your practice session. Uh, but I wanted to throw this out there, let you guys see it. Uh, and for those of you who plan on attending a class in the future, give you the opportunity to prepare yourself for it. Because uh, I've already had some people that practiced it a lot, and then when it came time to shoot it for record, uh, they threw that first round or they threw one of their cadence rounds just outside the box. And if you're breaking on the line, I can't give it to you. Everything's got to be one inch. That first round's got to be in the circle and those three rounds got to be in that box. Line breaks do not count. Uh, so I encourage you to check this out. Go ahead and put it up. Uh, feel like sharing your experiences in the comments or shoot, hit me up on Instagram. Let me know how it went for you. I'm Eric Allen with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.